Welcome to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, powering the good in our community. And so with that, we're honored to kick it off talking about an organization that does so much good, Junior League of Memphis. We're joined by the president, Tabitha Glenn. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Jeremy. How are you? Doing well. So um, long history with Junior League of Memphis and long legacy here in the Mid-South and coming up centennial celebration. So give us a little bit of a teaser for the history for Junior League of Memphis. Yeah, Junior League of Memphis was formed um, back in 1922. Uh, there were actually 17 women who got together and uh, coined the Junior League of Memphis and started to work serving the underserved, mainly women and children in the Memphis community. And over the last 98 years, we have grown to almost 1,600 women strong, um, working, um, you know, volunteering, working, training, learning from each other, connecting with each other, um, doing that over the last 98 years. And it's just a fabulous organization. There's so much good that you all do, and there's so many layers between the volunteerism and the service, the training and the education, the cultivation, the generosity with the resources. Um, mm -hmm. Let's take it in different pieces. Let's start with, though, the structure and how you're organized, because there are different levels in terms of when someone comes in and then ultimately a sustainer. So talk about the structure. Right. Great question. Um, when you start off in the junior league, you need to be at least 23 years old um, when you apply to be what we call a provisional in the league. And your provisional year is mainly set up for you to get a true taste of what the league has to offer, um, AKA meaning you're gonna do a lot of everything. Uh, it's, you know, it's not quite like um, uh, rush week, uh, you know, at college, but you, you, do, you do get involved in a lot. Uh, so your first year is your provisional year, and we literally have you in every aspect of the league, the volunteerism, the training, the connection, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's your first year. Uh, then once you, you make it through your, your first year, um, you become what we call an active. An active member uh, chooses her placement, so she can choose to, to become a, a leader in the league and want, um, you know, oversee one of our community programs, she can volunteer for one of our community programs or she can be involved in training itself. So we've got you know, three different tracks basically within the league you can go in. And then after around seven years of doing that, you have the option, you're not, it's not mandatory, but you have the option of going what we call a sustainer. Um, sustainer, much like the, the term, um, they help sustain our league both financially and by sharing their wisdom. Um, their wisdom, their, um, their connections, just their experiences, and, and they, you know, become the sustainers are more of an advisor role. Talk about the training and the education. Yeah, um, and, you know, that's why I joined the league. You know, I, I, my whole career has been basically a nonprofit, but it's been with a national nonprofit, if you will. And so I really didn't get that connection of actually helping people in my own backyard, in my own community. And so, you know, joining the league initially um, with that interest in mind, and then quickly pivoted after um, noticing what opportunities the league had for training. When you think about it, we've got women who set, um, you know, hold, who hold positions in Memphis, you know, all the way from the breakfast table to the boardroom table and, you know, at all different stages of life. And there is a tremendous, tremendous amount of learning that is just done through day to day connections. Um, it's like your own little peer group, your own little event group, you know, whatever it is you need uh, to learn from. Uh, in addition to that, we have, um, it, you know, monthly and sometimes weekly training programs. Right now we've got a, what is called the presidential series going on and um, training uh, virtually right now every Sunday for our members and its subjects. It's more advanced training, if you will, for a woman who's a little bit further along in her career. Um, and it's everything from emotional intelligence 
to uh, how to be an authentic leader in times of chaos and change, uh, which is real hot right now, a real hot topic. And so, you know, we've got, we've got those individualized training classes. And then, um, our, Jeremy, I don't know if you know about our Memphis Women's Summit that happens every February at University of Memphis. We have got really some dynamic, um, have had some dynamic talent on that. Um, Joan London, Erin Brockovich, um, Shazid Shahid was there, um, Dominique Dolls. I mean, women who have really walked a path of learning and has been able to share that learning. So the training is pretty much endless at this point. And I think that's something that it's one thing to have the, the gathering and the networking and the relationship building, but then it's another to equip them with the training to then truly become those catalysts. And that's why I think it's so powerful when you look at bringing them together with like mind, but then ultimately really training them and equipping them to go forth and, and do uh, to, to power the good. Share then the volunteerism aspect of this, because as you mentioned, even as a provisional right off the bat, you're placing them with nonprofits, they're getting a broad spectrum of different service opportunities. And then when they go active, they really dive in even further. Right. Um, at the Junior League, uh, several years ago, you know, there's, there's so much need in Memphis right now, right? And several years ago, um, we decided as a board of directors and as leadership that we really wanted to hone our efforts in a couple of particular areas to really make an impact, to really make a difference. And in, in focusing in on that, we, we took an issues-based approach and decided to focus on neighborhood revitalization. Um, the Junior League has always been um, active in the community along with addressing a need in, in specific neighborhoods in Memphis. Um, we've just not always done that under the Junior League umbrella. Um, a couple of institutions that are well known in Memphis that the Junior League has either helped start, started, or partnered to, to launch. Um, we've got WKNO, we've got Hope House, we've got Church Health Center, Children's Museum. All of those institutions have been, um, you know, have grown under um, uh, the steward of the women of the Junior League of Memphis, yet we have not put our brand or our name on it. Uh, and so, you know, we, we're really active in the Binghampton, Berkeley. Um, areas. We do everything from um, working over at Leicester Community Center to teach the women there, you know, how to balance a checkbook, um, you know, lots of different medical um, sessions of how to tell, you know, recognize the warning signs of a heart attack, diabetes, whatever. Uh, Director Casey over there keeps us really busy at Leicester Community Center, um, and we love him for it. Uh, it just, it's just a, a wide variety of things and you know our kids in the kitchen program is amazing. Um, they will go into different areas and in different uh, nonprofits and and help them you know help the the families or the children to teach them about you know affordable nutrition, um, you know education about what what is better to eat, um, you know all of those kinds of things. So uh, the community service is is a phenomenal and. You know, the one thing that makes us different is, Jeremy, you can go to a training class and say, learn how to, how to um, uh, host an event, if you will. You know, how to, you, you know, all the logistics that it requires to, to host an event. And then you can have a, a trial at doing that, testing your leadership and your skills by working in our community program. So I think that's the one thing that really makes us different is not only will we teach you, uh, you know, how to, how to enhance your leadership skills, we actually give you the, the platform to go practice. And while you're practicing, you're helping some people who really need your help at the same time. So um, it's just amazing. For you stepping in as the president, talk about enhancing your own leadership skills. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, the, the league has taught me a lot about myself, you know, um, looking in the mirror and, you know, probably three or four years ago, there were a lot of things I didn't like, you know, when I took a, a, a good look at that reflection in the mirror, um, you know, the, the great thing is I've made some amazing friends and those friends have been, uh, you know, kind of my accountability partners, if you will. Um, I, you know, have been able to be vulnerable with them and trust them with some of the things that I've been working on. Patience is one of them. 
um, which, you know, I'm glad I started working on that three years ago now that we're all at home. It's in letting go and not having control over situations was, was huge, you know, three years ago. And so I've had some wonderful friends and who have helped, you know, be my accountability partner and kind of tap me on the shoulder or tug on an ear when they see those old habits coming back. Uh, and so it's just really been amazing. Well, all of those, especially patients, and you know, when you look at the, all of those, are perfect for what we're dealing with right now. Um, talk about some of the pivots on your end. You mentioned the online training, but talk about some of the pivots you all have made as a result of COVID nineteen. Yeah, we've we, you know, obviously, large gatherings, um, you know, are not really something that that we're doing right now because we don't want to put our members at risk, and we do not want to put the community at risk. So. What we've been doing is, you know, in smaller groups, um, uh, we've got our own uh, junior league branded face mask, if you will, and we've all been uh, gathering in, in much smaller groups and doing things like diaper drives and food pantries and meal deliveries and, and those kinds of things. So, you know, we've been able to pivot. We've, we're working with all of our uh, community partners and addressing needs there as well. We, you know, we had uh, probably a month or a month or so ago, we had a community partner who had families who were in need of food baskets. And so, you know, our members got busy on Amazon and everywhere else and in and, and smaller groups got that stuff together and got those delivered. And we did a food pantry for Mid-South Food Bank a couple weeks ago. Um, and so, yeah, we're, you know, there's, the need is still there. It's just we need to figure out the logistics of how to answer that need. So well, I think it's inspiring for people to still hear that you're still, even if it's in small groups, wearing the masks, you're still out there serving physically and yeah. doing what needs to be done to be able to help the nonprofits in our community, which to me, that's really inspiring. Share, I think one of the, the things that people don't realize is that there, and it's, it's true in Memphis and the Mid-South, it's true across the state of Tennessee, and it's also um, within our nation, there mm -hmm. are more women than men. And there are more women than men now graduating from college and stepping into leadership roles. And I feel like it's so, so important for us as a community to truly lift, inspire, embrace, offer opportunity after opportunity to our women. And I look at this as a real opportunity for women of all ages to be role models, but also to build that pipeline for younger generations to step in. And like you said, cut their teeth, iron sharpens iron, but to, to learn how to be mm -hmm. leaders so that ultimately they can be the, the future faces and the future leaders of our community. Talk about the work you're doing in that context of really creating transformation with women who are the future. Right, um, and yeah, I, I couldn't have said that better. Um, we have a couple of uh, external facing programs that are open to, one particular is open to both men and women. Um, it's called our LEAD program. Uh, and what our LEAD program, it's an eight week program. It's less than 150 bucks. And um, you get all kinds of training materials from, you know, from time management to, um, uh, you know, emotional intelligence. Again, it's, it's more of an entry level. And it's mainly, it's mainly geared towards men and women who are just starting out in the nonprofit industry. Uh, so our lead program really focuses in on that. Uh, additionally, when you become a member, when you, when you join in that provisional year, um, you're assigned what we call a membership partner. That membership partner is like your buddy, like your hiring buddy that you would have at a company of starting a new job. Um, you know, realizing that, you know, joining um, an organization that has almost 1600 women in it who, you know, we're all active and we all want to save the world can be kind of intimidating and overwhelming, right? So you have your membership partner who is there to help you to make introductions, to show you the ropes. Um, again, you know, depending on what you want to learn, um, what you, what skills you want to enhance, that membership partner is your advisor to help, to help make sure that you get those skills. Um, we also have at least six times a year, what we call our gen general membership meetings. And that's when all women get together and we'll have somebody from the community come in and speak, um, you know, whether it's, um, you know, a community leader like Director Casey from Lester Center um, or the mayor, you know, talking about some of his initiatives. 
uh, we'll have uh, guest speakers come in and also share life lessons. So, you know, the, the, the learning opportunities are pretty much endless at this point. You know, I've had um, been blessed that, you know, being in the league, I've been in the league for almost 10 years now, wish I'd join it a lot earlier. Um, uh, but, you know, hey, better late than never, right? And, you know, when I've run into, when I've run into issues at work that I do not know how to solve, I mean, I literally have a Rolodex of 1600 women that I can look up and call or text or email or whatever and just say, hey, I'm having this problem. Have you ever been through this? And, you know, what were your outcomes? Help coach me through. Um, and speaking of coaching, we have a lot of women who are actually uh, coaches uh, in the league as well. So, uh, like I said, the talent that you can draw from is, is, is pretty phenomenal. And, um, you know, our membership fees for your first year, I think is $215 right now. Uh, you know, there's no, you can't get a professional coach for $215, much less 1600 of them at your disposal. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I can't say enough about it as you probably can tell Jeremy, it's, it's great. That's good. I love the passion and you're exactly right. So wrap up with easy ways that we can help you and then where to go to access all that information and connect in. So website, social media, where do we go? Yeah. Um, jlmemphis.org is our website. Um, you know, if you're not interested in becoming a member, we do, um, you know, all of our money goes back out into the community, all the membership fees, et cetera. So if you're interested in making a donation to support some of the work that we do, um, the, all of our programs are listed on the website and there's also a donate um, button there as well for you to do that. Um, we do have recruitment open right now. So we are accepting new members. Um, we only do that a couple times a year to make sure that our new members get the best experience possible. Um, so it's not, you know, we don't have it um, evergreen uh, every month of the year because we, we need to be able to do that. And so um, it's recruitment at jlmemphis.org. Um, there's also a join button on the website, jlmemphis.org too, that they can, they can apply there. Well, Tabitha Glenn, President, Junior League of Memphis, thank you for all you and your team do to make a difference. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me.